Hello, everyone. Welcome to getting started with the high-definition render pipeline for games. Today is going to be about the HGRP and if it's the right tech for you or your game, and also how to get started. My name is Jennifer. And clearly, that doesn't work. Perfect. My name is Jennifer. I'm a graphic support engineer working in the Unity Paris office. I'm part of the consulting and development team. If you don't know what that is, we basically go and see projects that our users do, and we try to help them to the best of uh, our abilities so they can achieve their vision. And we also provide feedback to R&D to make sure the product evolves in a way that you want. So, you've all seen videos about HGRB, you've seen some in the keynote, for example, you've seen at other Unite talks, maybe SIGGRAPH or GDC. But I hear three main questions usually. The first one is, is it the right tech for my game? The second one, well, if it is, where should I start? And the third one is, I already have a game. How do I go and convert it to HGRP? So today, we're going to answer those questions. And by the end of this session, I hope you have all the tools you need to get started on HGRP. So let's start with the first one. Is HGRP the right tech for my game? So I've created a checklist that relies on four pillars. Those pillars are simple. Is it the right target platform? Are you in the right production cycle? Do you have technical pillars that are compatible with HGRP? And of course, production skill set. Let's look into the target platform. Here, we're trying to answer this question. Am I shipping on a platform that is supported by the HGRP? If you're shipping on consoles such as Xbox One or the PlayStation 4, most definitely. On Windows, on Mac, on some VR headsets, starting 19.3, you have full support for HGRP. However, if you want to work on Linux, yes, it will work but we're not fully supporting it, but we're fixing it and improving things, so keep an eye out. For Nintendo Switch, OpenGL platforms, and mobile, currently we have no support, so other pipelines will probably suit you better. So, target platform is okay for your project? Let's look into the production cycle. Are you going to ship your game on a version that is compatible with our HGRP? HGRP starting to be in preview in the 19 cycle and out of preview in 19.3. So below 19, 18 and below, we, you have no support. You're going to be on your own. We don't recommend you to ship on it. 19.2. It is possible, we have HGRP. It's not out of a preview yet, you could ship, but the maintenance is mainly going to be done by you. And of course, 19.3, LTS and above, you have full support. So, you have the right target platform, you have the right production cycle. Let's look in the technical pillars of your game. Because HGRP might not be the right tech for your game, or for your artistic vision. So, you might have heard physically-based rendering is all about it in HGRP. If you have a lot of VFX, great. We have a great VFX editor, great tooling that goes with it. It's the right tech. If you want a unified lighting pipeline, it is also great for it. However, if you want weather and time of day, you currently have no support out of the box. You could still add to it, but you will, you will have to do a little bit of work for it. Global illumination. We have some. 
It's mainly baked GI at the moment, so if you want real-time GI, you will have to wait for another HGRP version to come out. Characters are a really important part of your games. We do have some shaders to help you. We have skin shaders, we have hair shaders, we have some eye shaders. If you want more than this or so iterate on those shaders, the work is going to be done by you. And it's the same thing from the environment. We do have some support for terrain. We have some surface scattering. The rest is going to be up to you to create. So you have the right target platform, right production cycle, the right technical pillars. Last pillar is the production skill set. Basically, do I have the right people to create my game? So I cannot decide that for you, but what I can tell you is it will require upgrade and maintenance, so you will need to take care of it. It's also a ramp up on the technical knowledge to go from the built-in rendering pipeline or from universal render pipeline to get to HGRP. That is not negligible, so you need to make sure that you have time to learn this tech. And of course, if you want to customize it, if you want to add to it, you will need a specialist to do so. Unfortunately, right now, it's flexible, but not as user-friendly as it could be. So, you've decided everything works out for you. Great. What's next? Well, next is actually understanding a bit more about the tech. Because if you don't understand some specific, it can become very hard for you. So we're going to discuss briefly what are the limits of HDRP, what is exactly is the HDRP philosophy, and what is it exactly it's trying to solve. So HDRP supported on 19 LTS and above. Great. It comes with its own post-processing stack, a high-definition one, which is great, honestly. <laughs> comes with ray tracing support, a VFX editor, a state-of-the-art graphics features, and of course, if you have really complex scenes, HDRP will scale better than the built-in rendering pipeline. But truth is, built-in pipeline has better support on previous versions of Unity. But also, it works on any platform. So if you're shipping both on mobile and PlayStation 4, HGRP might not be the tech for you. And anything you would find currently on the asset store, it mostly works with the built-in rendering pipeline. More package will come soon, but just so you know, it might be something you have to rework. So now, HGRP philosophy. You heard me saying it, you heard others saying it, HGRP is a physically-based rendering pipeline. But a lot of you probably don't know what it actually means. So it's very simple. You take a scene, you have a chair, you have a table, you have a light. You're like, OK, now I want to put values for my light. I need an intensity. What values do I put in? Well, actually, in HGRP, you would put values that you will find in real life with real physical units. So a light's intensity is expressed in lumens or lux. So now I just need to find a value, right? And actually, the value, you can find it anywhere. You can find it on the side of the box you just bought for your light bulb. You can find it on the internet, in science book. You could also measure it yourself. Next thing is understanding what HGRP is about. Why are we, what are we trying to do here with HGRP? HGRP is all about unified and coherent lighting. It's about performance and, of course, state-of-the-art tech. What it means is that artists will be able to author assets independently of the context. So when the context changes, the visuals, they remain coherent. Let's take back that example. I have my chair, I have my desk, and I have a light. 
I had a second light. Why do I see in the scene? I see what I would expect in the real world. And that's the main difference. Performance. The way we're developing at HGRP, we're making sure that the set of features you're going to get are going to be compatible with high performance on all the platforms we currently support. So you're going to be able to achieve the artistic vision without compromising on performance. And of course, what we're trying to do is to be par to the standard in the video game industry on physically-based rendering. So we're going to use physical lighting units, physics-based components, all combined with user-friendly tooling. Perfect. I understand what is HGRP. I know HGRP is the right technology for my project. Where should I start? Well, here is what I would recommend for you. Understanding the tech first. So you're coming to the stock, perfect. But when you're at home, what do you do? You have demos, you have samples. Then just create your own project from scratch. Just try it. And we have some toolings for you to help you in case you have some issues on your own. So let's look into what demos I actually really like. What you need to know is all the demos that we've produced and I'm going to talk about, they all produce with the same tech you're going to get when you download the HGRP package. There's no difference. It's the same tech. Fontainebleau and the Spaceship demo are two of my favorites. And there's an upcoming VR demo for those who like VR that I'm not going to talk about today, but in the next talk uh, done by Fabien, you're going to see. And what I really, really like about this demo, we always explain how we made it and why we believe it's a good demo. Fontainebleau demo. It's gorgeous. But what you need to know, it works on 19.1 and above. We always upgrade it. You can download it. It's on GitHub. Easy. What it showcases is the photogrammetry pipeline. We basically took assets in the real world and we put it into the engine. Volumetric lightings, and it has a really nice photorealistic look. And last year, we wrote a blog post about it to explain to you how we achieve these amazing visuals. Next one is the Spaceship Demo. It was released this summer along with 19.2. Still, you can download it on GitHub. You can see the trend. And it's a perfect showcase for what you can do with VFX. The VFX Graph, the VFX Editor, both with photorealistic look and the stylized look. For example, when you come into the spaceship, you can see this holographic look. It's this table. It's, it's beautiful. What it also demonstrates is three text we've added on top of HGRP for this demo. We've added alpha resolution, translucent rendering, octagon particle, and a simplified lighting model to be able to render all of this at constant frame rate on console. And of course, we're talking about it online in this blog post. But what if demos are not enough? What if you want more? Just so you know, in every HGRP package, you're going to see some samples here down the page. We keep adding to it. For example, in the next release, we just added the particle system shader samples. If you ever have shuriken particles, Go get that sample. It will definitely help you. If you want to know more and you're like me, I don't want a prototype before I understand fully the tech. Well, we have a more blog post. We have the HDRP manual, but we also have a lot of talks. Unite, GDC, SIGGRAPH, they're all available online. There's no reason you can not find the information. So. I understand about the tech. I get it. Now I want to play. It's easy. Open up the hub, create a new project, choose the high-definition render template, and you're all set. 
this is the first scene you're going to see in a template. Pretty easy. And just have fun. Play with it. What, what can you break? Nothing. So, in case you still break something, there's a render pipeline wizard. It's probably hidden, and it better be green, because it's definitely going to help you identify pot potential issues in your game. If you have the wrong color space, um, you don't have the right shadow mask mode, a lot of these settings, this wizard will definitely improve. It's his first step towards finding out what is the issue with your project. But wait a minute, I already have a game, maybe. And what I want is actually use HTRP to get the most out of my current game. So how do I convert? Here, I'm only going to talk about the conversion from the built-in rendering pipeline to HTRP. If you have another setup, it's not going to be tackled in this talk. First, choose which Unity version you need. Of course, then, upgrade to that version, and then only update from the built-in rendering pipeline to HTRP. So how do I define what is actually the right version of Unity and the right version of HTRP? It's a combination of several questions. And those questions, unfortunately, it's only you and the documentation that will have, be able to help you. So where is that documentation? Like I said, you open up the package manager. You're going to see which version you're currently running on. For example, here it's 7.1.1. And you can see links here. It's going to give you access to two things. The first one is the documentation and the manual. The second one is the change logs. The other way to access it is through docs.unity3d.com. There is now a link to the package's documentation in case you haven't downloaded the latest package. So what does it contain? It contains a lot of information, actually, about the features, about the asset, the upgrade guides, almost anything. And it keeps on improving. And the change logs, what it gives you a bit different is the view of which features have been added or fixed, what behavior change for each HTRP package version. So let's take an example. I've noticed that this feature is something I definitely want for my project. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Well, guess what? I noticed in the change log, this feature is added in the version 701. So what I need is Unity version 19.3. Here's a tip. Each major version of the package means it's compatible with a version of Unity. So for example, the 5 version, so 5.0.1 of the HDRP package, it's compatible with 19.1. If I want something like right before for this feature on a 7 cycle, it means that in 19.3 and above. So I know which version to use. Let's upgrade my project. My recommendation is upgrading one version at a time. For example, I'm on 17.4 LTS, and I have identified I need it to be on 19.2. I would go from LTS version to LTS version, and then I would go from one text stream version to another text stream version. Don't forget, in the manuals, we have upgrade guides that look like this. They will help you. And we have automatic API updater guides to also help you upgrade. But all of this is about HGRP. So how do I actually go from the built-in rendering pipeline to the HGRP? Well, we've created an upgrade tutorial. It's going to be up to date soon, but let's take a look and actually try this Viking village together. So this is the project you're going to get. This is what it looks like when you open it up. So first of all, remove the 
processing stack you might have already in your project. Maybe you downloaded it from GitHub, maybe, maybe you had it from the asset store, but like I said, the post-processing stack is no longer compatible with HGRP because it has its own post-processing stack. Then, make sure you are in the linear color space. Go to the project settings and just change your color space value from gamma to linear. So for example here, I'm in the gamma color space. I'm still in the gamma color space. Here I am in the linear color space. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now I'm all set up. I can download the HGRP package. So I go back into the package manager, select the HGRP, click install, wait. What it's going to do, it's actually going to install the first compatible version of HGRP with my Unity version. So in this case, I also have patches to download right after. So I'm going to update here to 7.1.1. Then I need to tell my project, hey, use the HGRP. To do that, we have what we call a high definition render pipeline asset. It's simple, right click, create rendering high definition render pipeline asset. And then go back to the project settings in the graphics window and assign it. So that's still on the old built-in rendering pipeline. I'm going to switch it. Whoops, everything looks pink. Yeah, because none of the materials from the standard pipeline are compatible with HGRP. So now it's the next stage. So to help you, I talked about the wizard earlier. It's still going to be useful. So before converting my materials, I'm going to make sure that all of my settings in the project are actually compatible with HGRP. I'm going to put it up. And this is what I'm going to see, probably. Here, for example, the light map um, encoding is wrong. So I could either choose which issue to fix, or this is fix all button that would do things automatically for me. Once I'm done, I can start converting my materials. We've included in HGRP a helper for you. So upgrade project material to high definition material. What it will do is simply do the conversion from the standard lit and unlit shaders to the HGRP lit and unlit materials for you. So that was before, that's after. Main difference is lighting is broken, the sky is broken. If you have other shaders or other materials that are part of this automatic upgrader, just so you know, you are able to create your own upgrader if you don't want to do it manually. We're not going to talk about this here, but just so you know, you can do it. Then I said the lighting is broken. Yes, because we used to be in non-physical lighting units, and now we are. So I'm going to open up the Light Explorer that you're going to see on the bottom of the screen here. And here I'm going to see all the lights from my scene. And OK, so what do I put in? We already talked about the torch lights and everything. I can find the answer on a box. But Wikipedia is a really great source to find the rest. Go on Google. It's for example, here I've uh, Googled it, and for my directional light in the scene setting for uh, nighttime, 0 0.25 lux is a great value for my directional light. So that was with the previous non physical lighting units value, and that was after. Much better. And then, of course, I need to regenerate my lighting, light maps are, are now all wrong. So open up the lighting menu and generate lighting. Looks better. The sky is still wrong, though. But before we forget, we did remove the post-processing stack from the project. And what you need to know is now post-processing is a complete part of HGRP. 
What it means also is that you have default settings enabled for the project. So if you go back to project settings, you're going to now see a new menu, which is called HGRP default settings. In this menu, you're going to see the default post-processing for the project. In this case, tone mapping and bloom. You could disable them, or you can leave, in, leave them as is. It's up to you. But what if I want some for my scene? Well, we also can do it. It's via volumes. So you can create your own volume in a scene, and then you add to this volume a new profile. In this case, I added sky and fog and post-processing volume. And I add an override for each post-processing effect I need. So if I want a different bloom, override, post-processing, bloom, bam, I got my new bloom. So here I changed the sky. Um, I re-added the post-processing I had with my previous scene, regenerated the light map, and this is what it looks like. Very similar to what I had before. But maybe in future, I want to update to new HDRP version. Just so you know, there's always documentation about it. In the manual, for example here, we're explaining how to upgrade from 19.1 to 19.2. It's easy, follow the guide. Usually it also comes with automatic upgraders, so just keep an eye out on those menus. We often provide more helpers with time. Perfect. I have my HGRP project. So is there something else that you might want to know? There are a couple of things, actually. The settings, they're everywhere. Just plainly everywhere. You have some that are project-wide. There are some for your scene. There are some from your camera. So let's take a quick look into those. Project-wide settings, they can be found in two places. First one, we just talked about it, the HGRP default settings in the project settings menu. Here, I can say for the project, hey, I don't want any shadows. Hey, I don't want to support ray tracing. Or remember that small asset we created at the beginning, the render pipeline asset? Well, this also contains some information that you might need. Decals, post-processing, do I want to support VR or not? And then you have scene settings. So what are you going to see on the screen? So all of these are handled via volumes. This is very different for the built-in rendering pipeline. So you can have local volumes, you can have global volumes, they can blend together, they can transition, you can have a, a priority. There's a lot you can do, so you're going to have to play with that. In this example, I have a new volume where I basically changed the sky and the fog. And you have the camera-based settings. If you remember in the, the built-in rendering pipeline, you could already tweak things on the camera base. The background of my camera, projection, the field of view, you can still do that. But now, what we've added is custom frame settings. So basically, for each camera, you can choose that this camera, for example, will not render any fog. It might be needed. Perfect. I have all of my settings. I have my project. Wait, I might want to add more. So we've added in the latest HGRP package version three hooks for you. The first one is custom passes. Custom passes is basically a way to render a selected list of scene objects with a different material. So you could render them a second time. We also added custom full screen passes. It's a way to render a full screen quad with a specific material. And we've added custom post processes. So in this example, I'm adding a component on a volume, a custom pass volume. I'm adding um, 
injection points, with, which is a draw renderer's custom path. So it's the first situation here. And here I can choose basically that all of my opaques, I'm going to render them with another material. So I'm going to render them a second time. So, OK, I can modify HTRP. But wait a minute. The source code is on GitHub, too. I couldn't modify it here, right? And just use that. Yes, you can. But doing so, it's at your own risk. Every time you're going to upgrade, it's going to be harder. So here is a really quick rule of thumb. First, try with the hooks we just added, the custom passes and the custom post processes. If it, that is not enough for you, then yes, you can change the source code. But if you do so, I would strongly encourage you to make a copy to branch out and to integrate regularly all the bug fixes we're going to provide. If you want to know more about HGRP, we already, already had some sessions, but more are coming. Especially if you want to know more about VR and HTRP. After this, Fabian is going to talk about it. If you have more questions for me, there are two mics in the back, so you could use them right now for questions. Thank you. Thank you.